And Matt, we're going to be talking about the VEZ 2500. Yes, sir. Uh, how new is this piece of equipment? This shredder is four or five years old for VECO plant as a whole. Mm -hmm. But for the States, it's a couple of years, three years old maybe. Because as it grew up in Europe and they tested it and really got their feet under them, that's when they could bring it over to us to really bring to the, the U.S. market confidently. And how has it been received so far? It's very well. It's a, it's a, it's a big shredder. So there's not many needs for it except for large applications, but it's one of our better uh, production piece of equipment, obviously for its size, but the quality and the size of what we, we do with the rotor and the cutters trying to create a very rugged and robust system internally to the shredder has, has done really well in many applications. Tell me about the capabilities of it. As far as the shredder goes, it can be used in a various, um, uh, many, many applications. It could be MSW, it could be post-consumer plastic bales, it could be wood. Um, the, the opportunities are endless, but for the most part it's been in MS, MSW and then baled applications. And for most of those you're going to be, as a pre-shredder, which is what is behind me, you're going to be anywhere from 25 tons an hour and it could be as low as 10 tons an hour based on the material. So films would be in that 10 ton per hour range where MSW would be 25 tons per hour. Wow. Talk about the efficiency and productivity, what this brings to an operation. So for an operation, this being a pre-shredder for let's say um, a cement kiln that needs a one inch minus particle, you would pre-shred and then re-shred. And this unit will allow you to, to have a high uptime based on the way it's built with the swing up floor, um, the high torque motor that will physically stop the rotor when uh, tramp material is, is detected. So instead of a four or five hour process to dig a hopper out when you've damaged something, you've got a one hour or less process because of the swing up floor and the high torque motor being able to stop very quickly and keep the shredder from destroying itself. And what's maintenance like on this? this uh, maintenance, we try to make easy with our step going up and then the swing up floor. Everything's gonna be chest high, so we try to keep the ergonomics. But uh, every couple hundred hours, you're gonna rotate cutters. And then after the fourth rotation, you're gonna replace those cutters. So you're gonna be in the four to three hour uh, process for rotating cutters and about the same to replace them. And Matt, what kind of operation would be ideal for this piece of equipment? Uh, a lot of applications that we've been successful in would be uh, plastics to fuel, a uh, waste to fuels, and then a few pure recycling, mechanical recycling operations where they're physically taking the plastics back to, uh, yeah. through a mechanical process and then back to a virgin resin. But for the most part, plastics to fuel and waste to fuels. I see. Um, anything else about the uh, the VZ2500 that I haven't asked you about you think is uh, should be mentioned here? Really for us, uh, there's several shredder manufacturers out there that build a very similar shredder. The main difference is the way we drive the system. The high torque motor, it's electromagnetic drive that will produce over 25,000 foot pounds of torque, which is the most in the industry. And we have another level up from that will produce 40,000 foot pounds of torque with two motors which is again, the most in the industry. And it's the most efficient. So it's gonna save roughly 50% in energy cost compared to its induction motor counterpart. So that's really where we change in philosophy and coming from our German counterparts where energy costs are high and the demand on what you're shredding is high. So it's not a horsepower race, it's a torque race. So we really push torque and efficiency and that's where we try to separate ourselves from the competition. Did any changes have to be made when you transitioned from the European machine to the North American machine? It's identical. The only thing we may change is this internally, us understanding our material, that's the, the differences here than it is in Europe. The configuration internally where Germany may say, well, we've got that kind of material here and we use this internal configuration. We know our material may be a little different, whether it be uh, the molecular makeup or just the size or the packaging uh, and say, okay, we've ran into that, but we need to make these changes so that the overall machine is the same. It's just a few internal tweaks based on the U.S. market. I see. And uh, again, anything that I can't think of asking you that you, you think might be uh, relevant, Matt? That's getting most of it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so no, much. Thank you for really, time, really appreciate your time, nope. Matt.